ho ho, I am back, and welcome to my Thanksgiving special. No one really cares about Thanksgiving anymore, so I want to make a Thanksgiving special, cry about it. I haven't made a video in like, what, two months? Anyways, I've been waiting to make this video for a while now. I've been a fan of SMG4 since like 2015, and their videos have always given me some sort of happiness that I can't usually get from other YouTubers. And now finally, the lawsuit arc is over. I want to rate them all, every single arc from lowest to highest. Also, one more thing, this is entirely my opinion. I may get things wrong and it will be appreciated if you tell me in the comments. So with all that being said, let's talk about my least favorite arc. Also, you know, spoilers. My least favorite arc out of the seven is... The Revelations arc. But my many issues with the arc it isn't bad. I just think it's the worst one because it feels the most unnecessary in the wrong way. This arc is mainly just Genesis arc part two. Melanie's once again the main focus of his arc and there are things that I would have changed in my opinion to make it better. In the first half, Melanie has only been seen as a target of harassment or bullying. I would much prefer if she was still sad about Axel but fighting away her sadness, showing bravery in her character, or why not show her unsureness about her newfound powers. We do get that later however i would have liked it more if it was more prevalent in the first part another thing i hate about this arc is the god box there's a club in the school about the god box which up until this point was never mentioned i wouldn't be mad if new lore was added but the god box is like extremely fucking powerful and it caused the genesis arc and the revelations arc and the god box is just really stupid in concept the god box is basically the anti-life equation which answers to all the questions ever needed and has insane power so, why didn't SMG1 or 2 decide to tell anyone? Was this not important to say? Why didn't Zier go for the god box in the first place? Why didn't any of the SMGs kick out the box club after tampering with something that's so powerful? Speaking of Zero, I hate his big twist and I hate Niles. You can tell that this twist wasn't planned because it's so unnecessary and it didn't even hint at it once. The whole twist about Niles capturing Zero and making him into this big monster to create the perfect universe is lame because we didn't need a twist. Also because it generally just doesn't make any sense. How the fuck did no one realize that Melanie was talking to no one? Or even if they did, tell her about it. What about when Melanie was training in the field? Did Melanie shoot those cannons at herself? Did she make those flying things of death fly towards her? Also, the fact that Nas was like a spear and that possessed Melanie doesn't make any sense. It has lots of plot holes. Why can't he possess any of the SMGs to use their power for his own good? I get why he's training and manipulating Melanie that shows she can get stronger, but why does he need her to go into overkill mode? Can he activate it himself? Actually, couldn't he possess Melanie in the middle of the night, kidnap the rest of the crew, and do the ritual there instead? These are things that pull me away because this arc could have been way better. The main reason why I hate this arc is because it's way too complicated. We didn't need a whole confusing twist of a backstory for a simple villain. Why could couldn't it be a simple story like let's say SMG0 was left out by the other SMGs because he was too weak. He wanted to be as powerful as them so he asked the god box but in turn gets corrupted and destroys SMG1 and 2's universe in revenge. See how simple that is instead of adding a whole new character and plot twist? And it could make the characters of SMG1 and 2 much more interesting as they regret how they treated Zero in the past and want to make things right. They could have been a very good character arc because their characters in the present aren't the best. They're really boring. But no, when Melanie killed me Axel, he joined with Melanie this whole time and is now coming back to rejoin with Zero to reshape the universe. For all the shit I give this arc, he still has his good moments though. The part where Melanie finally sees Axel and has a choice to make, either go into the light with him or go back to save her friends, the only time I ever felt emotion. I like that SMG out of all the characters gets a character arc about how he realizes that true power isn't within, and he's using the power not only for his selfish wants, but for the greater good. And the voice actor for Niles is really impressive. I like his performance, but I don't like how fast Niles changes his mind. Zero says, Niles, you're my friend. Stop this. And Niles' whole reign of terror just stops like that. In just one pep talk, his whole mind of heart, his whole terrorism just changes. Also, because of this arc being so connected to the Genesis arc, it makes the Genesis arc worse as well. I hate that Zero even came back as a villain. This arc should have been like the Bob arc, where instead of a big bombastic adventure, it's an exploration on his character and what his friends mean to him. I would have preferred this arc to be much more calm and grounded. A personal journey of Melanie and her dealing with sadness over Axel and struggling with her newfound powers and fighting to overcome it. That would have 
have been way better than Zero coming back. But oh wait, never mind. It's Niles and Zero mush up to, to one zombie. This also, in my opinion, makes Axel's death a bit worse because he knew that Melanie had to kill him to save her and his friends. It hurt him as well because he was in love with her and wanted to be in a relationship. But he put that aside to save their lives. It would have been better with Axel and Zero dying, making his sacrifice much stronger. Also, one last thing, I promise. I'm currently I'm currently writing this at 12 a.m. and I just saw Cybel's video about how the arcs are getting repetitive, and I 100% agree. Although some of the arcs that I enjoy, I can still predict. I call it from the minute that the arc started, I knew that Axel was going to die. You probably shouldn't be this critical while watching it as it ruins your view time watching it, but that problem is still present in many arcs. Next one on the list for the worst is the Lawsuit arc. Now for me, the YouTube arc and the Lawsuit arc are on the same quality, but this arc just slightly more bothers me, and I'm a bit more swayed to dislike this because of the video made on this, so I'll go over that shortly. Waffy really sucks now. The original idea of why we had Waffy was to pin Mario and SMG4 against each other in challenges. A simple idea. However, they started to add Waffy inappropriately to darker arcs. Imagine after Megi gets bombed by Goku and Desi dying, and then Francis and Mario having a fucking rap battle. That would make the whole arc 10 times worse. And the way they introduce it in this one is terrible. I was hoping for a Better Call Saul reference, or at least her doing her actual lawyer stuff because she wanted to be that since 2017. She also wanted to be a cop and a sports trainer, so yeah. But I was so disappointed when all she did was assault Kong over something petty and then SMG4 whispers something in Kirby's ear for the digital Waffy. That's lazy writing and it has no point to be in the story. I don't care that Waffy's in the story. I care about how they introduce it. Do you know how weird it was when Zero was fucking rap battling the crew for no reason? A good thing about this arc however, I do like that it has less stakes for let's say the characters but I'll get into that later. First I'll talk about the good thing. I like the idea of SMG4 using a real life thing and putting it into an arc. Same goes for YouTube. I like when they have interesting ideas based off real life events. But the payoff is a bit bad. We start off with a simple episode. SMG4 gets a lawsuit and has to give up Mario to make another game. However, Meggy, along with other characters, try to stop Nintendo from taking him. The DNC isn't having it, but they make a Luigi game instead. Later, they get kicked out the Mushroom Kingdom and Lawyer Kong says that non-Nintendo players aren't allowed in. And the rest of the arc is SMG4 trying to prove that SMG4 uses parody law of taking back Mario. And this leads to the boldest thing that they did in any of these arcs redesign the characters. M many could argue, was to give a reason to redesign the characters out of fear? I don't think Nintendo has sued them yet, but after SML got sued, I guess not taking any chances. But the ending of his arc was proving that it wasn't his legal right to make these videos. And especially on the fact that Australia lost the fitness as well. So even if Nintendo did sue them, nothing would have happened. This entire rap battle is proving that their videos are an illegal right to do so, so why did they redesign them? Especially since Miyamoto says SMG4, 3, Bob and Boo games have to change, but not Mario. I realize that if they redesigned Mario, everyone else in the fans would have been pissed. But what about the other characters? What about Toad, Joshi, or fucking Mario? And Twitter didn't like this at all, which I'll admit, the redesigns are a bit terrible. It isn't terrible on Bob per se, but on everyone else, it looks way too cartoonish. Meggy at least looks similar to the SMG4 feel. And they improved Bob, but the other characters look like me characters, and they should have put more time into this redesign. Speaking of taking time, this arc felt really rushed and shows a flaw with all the arcs recently. They are being put out way too fast. We have had two different arcs in the same year. They should have kept it to once a year to really focus on writing arcs, or maybe two years to make one. We've had so many arcs at this point that's becoming cluttered. I have the opinion that the Lawsuit arc shouldn't have been an arc at all. And yes, while the fillers are nice to watch, there's only like 3 to 4 main videos on the plot itself, and that should have been it. Psycho got a nice character arc and a much smaller story, and it focused on her character, and I hope that more people watch it. Overall, this arc is kinda harmless besides the redesigns. It's a quick short arc that won't really offend you. I, I like that it balanced a somewhat dark and comedic tone, and even though I don't like how Wapi is introduced, the arc is really fun, and the rap battle is really good, I can't lie to you. It's stupidly good, like, it's like the best one out of the entire series. Incantations, greedy expectations, hate, love, and rejection. Next up on the list is the YouTube arc. This is many people's favorites, and I can kind of see why, but I did not like this stuff whatsoever. Once again, I like the plot being based around what was happening with YouTube at the time. Around this time, people were starting to complain about how SMG4 was getting child friendly because of the new rules, so this arc was made as a response. And this was one of two arcs that I didn't fully predict once the plot kicked off. However, that doesn't mean that the characters get the best of writing. The first video in this arc is surprisingly good and emotional. It goes into SMG3's feelings about how he's always 
until like he's been an SB4 shadow. I wish we've seen that in other videos, but oh well, I'll take it. Also, this whole arc starts because SMB4 was petty. He saw that SMB was popping up on YouTube. So he goes out of his way to bomb his studio. This isn't in his character at all. He isn't this quick to act off on. Although I like the SMB4 realizes what he did was not only stupid, but wrong and wants to apologize. But like I said, the acts of terrorism isn't in his character. However, I like the fact that I can root for SMB3 for like five seconds. Unfortunately though, they had to make him an asshole to everyone. SMB3 treats everyone with this level of disrespect in this arc all just to get back at SMB4. And at the end, nothing changes. SMG3 gets sent into a portal, everyone hates him, and he gets sent to the internet graveyard to die. All the conflicts of SMG3 and 4 are over the most petty shit, so it's really annoying when they made such a big deal out of it. Another character I dislike is Susan. Now, I don't completely hate her because the character is that bad. Susan in his arc is hilariously petty for no reason. And yes, I know that that was supposed to be the point of her character, but I wish that she wasn't around this much because she gets annoying really fast. One of the episodes is solely devoted to Susan fucking around with Mario for 14 minutes. However, I think that the world building is actually solid. We meet the end of that graveyard, a place where dead memes and hang out. Mario and Luigi are in there because fucking Susan teleported them for no reason. Why Luigi? He had nothing to do with this. Anyways, back to SMB3. In this arc, I would make him an anti-hero because that's what he's been in the newer ones. He never once gets a redemption arc and his goal could have been completed if he was nicer to his cast. The only reason why Mario gets this phone because the cast didn't care about him. And that's the thing with this conflict. No one's opinions change. I want to root for SMB4, but all it does is constantly being a dick to everyone. And by the end, he still gets hated and gets thrown into the internet graveyard. If I made the arc, I would have made Susan the main villain and make SMG3 partner up with Susan to remove SMG4. Susan's motto is that she's petty for no reason and how she hates how explicit their videos are. And SMG3's motto should be that he wants SMG4 to be gone so he can overshadow him. But as SMG4 gets erased, he should feel some sort of guilt for doing this. He steals the remote and brings him back to defeat Susan and make him mortally battle with his feelings towards SMB4 and his lust for power. In this arc, SMB3 and 4 should have been the main characters of this arc. It would have been so cool if they had some non-petty banter and struggled to fix the rocky relationship. But besides that, I do like when Mario outsmarts SMG3 to get the phone. I like when Mario is serious for once because it's very rare. Anyways, the ending is kind of bad because I did SMG3 dirty and that's it. I like SMG3's backstory, the concept was neat, wasted potential though. The next one is the Rapper Bob Arc. The Rapper Bob Arc thing is really underrated. This segment will be short because there isn't a lot of plot and instead it focuses on Bob as a character. Before, Bob was just a funny guy who treats everyone like shit. And in this arc, he gets a really good character development. That's the whole reason why this arc exists, to give Bob an actual character besides being a quit machine. And I'm glad that his character arc is really good. The arc starts with Boobkins falling down a well and Bob saving him. Bob gets his house bombed and he usually will be upset, but he realizes that he can use that to his advantage. Then later when Boobkins ruins the concert, Bob lashes out on Boobkins, revealing that he only did what he did to get popular, showing that he will do anything, even betray his friends to get him where he is. And this isn't out of character, even before the arc even happened, he was still betraying his friends a lot. And I like that both are on the wrong here. Even though Boobkins have good intentions, his actions were really stupid that crashed the concert. And Bob is wrong for, you know, the whole betraying the friends thing. He treats them not only because he hates them, but because they make him the butt of every joke. But when Boobkins came along, he replaced him as the butt of the joke. And Bob became a pushover, and he doesn't want to be a pushover. You think this world is nice? You're either an asshole or a pushover. A Bob or a Bookkins. And I sure as hell don't want to be a Bookkins. Only Bootkins has really been nice, and they have since been a duo. Since that argument, Bootkins has been really dormant about his feelings, and later Bob will become irrelevant, so he makes a diss track against his friends, once again showing that he will do anything for fame. I also like when Psycho helps the crew after seeing Bootkins sad. Psycho wouldn't admit that she has friends that she loves and cares for, but in the face of what Bob did, she finally admits to loving her friends. After Psycho makes her diss track, Bob loses everything. Fame, house, and more importantly, friendship. He goes to see if they're still friends, but then gets rejected. He tries to make it up by giving them golden statues, but he thinks that by just giving them a gift that they should accept him. They reject him again. He then goes back to where he started, back in the dump, till Waluigi comes along and teaches Bob the meaning of friendship. I used to dislike of how Waluigi was in this arc, but now I think it was the best choice. Waluigi knows Bob's pain, as his whole arc was feeling rejected by everyone. He asks Bob a question. 
what is most important to you. And his first instinct is to save fans and money. He climbs a large cliff and Waluigi asks him multiple times, what is most important to you? He throws Bob off a cliff. Now in this time, Bob realizes his love over wealth and to enjoy his friends more than fame. When it hits him, Waluigi saves him. He then retires from his rap career, realizing what he lost besides his fame. When his friends heard that, they take him back in. He was accepted, just like Wario was to Waluigi. He finally gets accepted again. Why can we have more arcs like this? <laughs> These next arcs are the ones that I have little to no problems with. At number 3, we have the Waluigi arc. There's nothing wrong with this arc. I find this arc to have the best episode. It was the first arc ever, so it was the original concept. And it used the meme that Waluigi was in the Smash yet as its foundation. There are no plot twists either. The story is simple and to the point. Waluigi's motives are clear and you feel bad for him. In the first episode, no matter what he does, he gets rejected by Smash, but most importantly, his brother. His original power in Smash is giving you his pain, the pain of rejection, and his powers are consistent and easy to explain. He gets his powers by being rejected, but when he feels accepted, he loses his powers. In Mario Saw, he makes a plan to get rejected by Mario to get stronger because Mario accepted his party invitation. Even Wario gets some sad moments in, as he gets sad from rejecting his brother and him having nothing. Waluigi takes over the Mushroom Kingdom and starts a Waffy parody of Super Smash Bros. And at the end, Wario accepts his brother, and ever since then has been controlling his powers and finding ways to help people get rid of the pain that he had instead of giving it away. Now we are on the last two arcs. This has been fun and I hope this video isn't destroying my PC. But anyways, number two is... The Genesis arc, woo, yeah. This was originally at number three, but I now like it more because of how much stuff it manages to accomplish in a tight story. One thing I like about the story is SMG3. All the stuff I wanted out of a YouTube arc came into this one. It wasn't forced either. And I like his interactions with SMG4. In the first episode, we see way more character development than he ever got. We see that he's a celebrity, he watches over the internet graveyard. He's gotten what he's wanted, but with that, he's also a lot more cured and a lot more tame. This makes SMG3 and 4 banter not be petty. Another thing I like about this arc is how information is spread. There are some great world buildings with this story, and it makes sense to the canon storyline. I like that they added more stakes, such as Mario being the Avatar, and if he dies, everyone else would die. However, Mario can't die. He's been through so much shit that would have caused him death. I do like it causes more stakes for the story, so I'll you know I'll leave it alone. However, for all the praise they gave this arc, the one thing I would change is focus a bit more on Axel and Melanie. In my opinion, I don't think that Axel and Melanie interacted a lot in this one. In the anime arc, there were two different stories that went together in the end, and they both go back and forth between SMG4 trying to fix anime, and Meggy once again trying to win Splatfest. And with that, they get their old separate videos, which I believe Axel and Melanie should have gotten. The only reason why Axel's death was so impactful, at least for me, was because I liked Axel as a character. Going back to SMG3 and 4, I like that at the end, we get some SMG3 and SMG4 interaction, and have character development, and used to help him escape twice in the same episode. This whole arc is really solid and I like it a lot. I could explain a bit more why, but I think people like this one more than others, so I don't think I need to explain myself. And I really just want to talk about the anime arc, so... This arc is perfect. I see nothing wrong with this arc whatsoever, and if you do, please tell me why so I can make sure that you enjoy this arc. If you didn't get the warning in the beginning of the video, I will tell you here, if you haven't watched this arc yet, I highly suggest that you do, because this is the best SMB4 series besides R64. This has the best character arc out of any character, the best videos, the best plot, the best overall story. It's just really good, like it's really solid. The fact that there's multiple stories that happen from one story and coming all out into a great finale is really great storytelling. I also think that Francis is a really good villain. Actually, I'm going to talk about Francis as a villain in this. I like how Francis isn't a well-written character and he doesn't have this developed backstory with deep and thought out motives. The reason that he's so effective is because he's the most insufferable piece of shit. Every scene that he's in, you hate him. He does the most annoying shit and that helps you make a villain. I also like that he doesn't get a character arc because he doesn't need one. His motives are plain and simple. He wants Axel's pen to create his own waifu island, but he needs ink used by Inklings to power it up. This is a simple but effective reason of why Francis is a good villain. Every decision in this arc was made in the character of everyone and it made sense to the overall narrative. However, the main thing that most people know about this arc 
is Meggie. Meggie gets the best character writing out of all the characters. For instance, in one of the episodes, Meggie gets furious at the group's constant joking around and not taking training seriously and leaves. She later regrets that she did that and questions her journey about not winning a Splatfest in two years despite all the hard work that she's put in. Meggie is questioning her journey and her expectation to be upcoming star Splatfest and now that she's lost all hope, she breaks down to tears thinking that she's a disappointment. This view is different from the Meggie that was also on the screw with Mario two years ago when she was once filled with hope, now lost. And that is just in one scene. I like this one scene where the group reunites after having their own stories and this scene alone makes both plot lines working together in a way where it makes sense and everyone wins in the end. With Meggie getting her guns back and in return helping Axel on Ben Anime. Speaking of Destiny, I like her in this arc. Her arc is just really solid and unfortunately her character is controversial because of her death. And I think that all of y'all are fucking retarded for thinking that. Destiny's death was needed for Meggie's character arc and the story. It was shocking and her death paved the way for much more darker arcs to come. And her arc in this story is complete. Think of his death as for Hank's death in Breaking Bad. The show writer Vince Gilligan wanted to make Hank finish his character arc before he dies to finish his mission of capturing Heisenberg because that's what he's been doing this entire time. And before he died, he stayed true to his character and got what he wanted. Jesse's arc was finished, and all that was left was for Maggie to win Splatfest as a way to raise up the stakes. I like the little heart to heart she got with Psycho, as in the beginning, they were running ones with each other because of disagreements. Now more calm and more reasonable. We also see her open up about how she loves her friends even though that she hated all of them before. I just think Dusty was handled well. Another new character is Axel. I like that his character arc is confusing and shows a sad but happy backstory. I like the little mystery behind the kidnapping. The crew concluded that Axel must be behind it after some reasonable evidence. But Psycho doesn't want to believe it because of her friendship. While it may be biased, it's still a good way to challenge ideals. And at the end, they come to a base agreement that whoever it is, it doesn't matter because they still have to save Meggie. I think we get enough scenes with Destiny in order for her character arc to feel natural, not forced. I also like the little friendship that Meggie and Destiny had before her death. Before her death, she helps her broken Axel. Destiny says that the reason why Meggie's her rival, and they have this constant back and forth because no matter what she does, she always never quits, and it means that she will be a champion one day. She proves that she has the spirit and will win something because of her efforts. And if Axel wants to prove that he's the best manga artist, then you have to prove it. I also personally love how this death have no music, just a terrified reaction of everyone, Francis being a dick, and Meggie's character forever changed. Unlike Axel, I think that we spent a lot of time with Destiny, as the character arc was well written. The rival that only wanted to beat Meggie, to open up to having friends, respecting her rival, and her dying words was to finish what they started. I like that Maggie tells Axel to use the machine to charge his ink weaver. Maggie knows that if she doesn't sacrifice herself that they will all die. She knows that all her Splatfest goals, all her dreams will be gone, but that's fine with her if her friends can live. Maggie immediately feels survivor's guilt and blames herself for Desi's death. Axel uses Desi's words about getting back up no matter what. She pushes the boat onto the water, promising that she'll win Splatfest. Not just for herself, but to Desti. I recently heard that people hated her redesign, but I feel like she's a better character than when she was in England. Besides her drive to win Splatfest, that's all we got to know her by personally. With these huge changes, there's new opportunities and new stories to be told. Like how she has to accept change and deal with her new human form. Getting jobs, buying houses, and trying to help people. And overall, being a better person. However, this arc couldn't be finished without Maggie's destiny. And it's sad that people don't like it as much as I do. I like that even after this arc ends and Meggie is still affected by Destiny, there's an episode where Meggie goes through the literal five stages of oppression. The story is that Splatfest is having its grand finale. No more Splatfest after this one, so the stakes are high. Meggie is training for Splatfest, but isn't as good as she once was when she was an inkling. The Inkboy 3000 helps Mario, Tario, and Luigi do things that Kimons can't do, but Squids can. But Meggie doesn't want to change. She thinks that she is just as good as she was before. This, this whole arc is her dealing with loss and letting go the past. She won't accept herself because she has a stubbornness that she wants to show off and impress everyone else. When she barely survived the first one, she has this vision of her past. Her past is telling her to embrace the new and use the Inkboy 3000, but she's still in denial. Later when she lost in the second round, she starts to cry, blaming herself when Axel tells her that there's nothing wrong with relying on the Ink Boy. but she wishes that she didn't have to rely on it. She wishes that she can go back. Axel says that only your appearance has changed. Sorry your abilities have changed or you're the same person that you once were. With the fresh new start and more hope, Meggie accepts that it is what it is and that she's still gonna give it her all. With that, her old self fades away and a new self replacing it. After a bit of sweet win, with Meggie winning Splatfest, all her dreams, wishes, 
and Desi's problem is falling off her shoulders. However, she still doesn't know what to do. Besides her gold win splat fest, she hasn't thought about what she wants to do with her life. After her win, Desi tells Maggie to move on with her life and start focusing on herself instead of Desi. They both hug and Maggie finally realizes that she needs to move on. Whatever happened, happened, and that she needs to focus on being herself. And the episodes after that justified that. She bought a house, tried to be a cop, tried to be a sports coach, tried to be a lawyer, and I wish that S&P 4 would choose a career for her already. I've seen people make their own ending for the Desi thing, and no hate, but that would have made Desi's sacrifice and Maggie's entire arc pointless if Desi lived through getting stabbed in the heart and getting bombed. Desi's death, whether it's sad or not, needed to happen in order for the story and for Maggie's character arc to happen. And also the last thing, in SMG4 is what if, they play around with the fact that somehow Maggie goes through the same character arc with Desi alive, and somehow, the same Sephiroth kills Maggie, even though Francis is dead. If everything besides Desi stuff happened, wouldn't he be dead by now? I don't care right now, I don't care. I hope by now I made my point clear of why I prefer this over every arc. I hope that SMG4 improves on upcoming arcs because the recent ones, while being okay, aren't as good as the old ones. I hope that the next arc will be like a, like a, let's say a civil war, with no right or wrong sides, and it will pick two sides against each other in a fun way. However, SMB4 has been really into this cosmology stuff, so the next few arcs will be less grounded and more galactic. If you have any questions, please tell me in the comments below. Don't be losers and hate on it just because I dare like the anime arc or I dislike the lost arc. My work is done, subscribe and I'll see you next month.